everyone. I'm Squirtle Plays, and this is a build guide for the Foam of Nature. It is a double barrel Force of Nature replica shotgun thing that fires straight spring thunder shells. But if you're watching this video, you probably already know that. So uh, we're just going to start with uh, looking at what hardware you need. So uh, you, you need some 632 nuts for, you know, the, for the threaded rods and other things. You need some self-tapping screws, or, um, well, I, I don't have any near me, uh, just screws. You need screws, basically, uh, like Nerf screws. Um, what I used is, I used, right here, these uh, self-tapping screws. Uh, they are M2.6, 10 millimeter, self-tapping. If you can find these, they're amazing. They work for pretty much everything. Um, and then, once I ran out of those, I used these 440 caliber and Howard Rickett countersunk screws, which basically they're, they come with all the caliber and talentful hard kits, and they come with a bunch of them, and they're countersunk and they work really well. Uh, you also need, if you're building the one with the, the version with the stock, you need uh, some 632, 632 uh, bolts, or screws, whatever you want to call them. Uh, basically they go through the stock to hold the shell carrier, if you want that. Um, they don't need to be an exact length, probably just longer than an inch, I'd say. Then you also, and you need another, and you need another one. Well, you don't, you can probably use something else for this, like a metal pin or something. But I opted to just use a six, uh, six thirty seconds screw. You can probably use one shorter than this, probably around an inch. Uh, but it, this is an inch and three quarters. It's a bit long for the priming handle, but it should work. Uh, next, you need some springs uh, for the barrel release. You need a, you need a spring for the, um... Uh, ejector catch, which I cannot find. Where, where did this go? Ah, here it is. For the ejector catch, you need a spring. Uh, in the in the teardown video, he says you can just use some dart foam, but whenever I did that, it wore out extremely quickly, and it wouldn't catch anymore. So I have to just cut down a small catch spring and use that instead. And it seems to work well. Um, you also need... An extension spring for the uh, for the uh, ejector, and a I used um, uh, a long out of darts catch spring for the catch, and I believe that's all the springs you need. Uh, yeah, it seems like it's it. Uh, you need a well, no, well, technically not. Inside of here, there's the ejector trip, which uses a custom bent piece of spring steel, or music wire. It's too complicated for me to show in this build guide, but Adrian has a guide on how to bend the spring. This is going to be the only part of the blaster that I am not going to be disassembling, because it is a nightmare, and I really don't want to put it back together. It, you can you can do it on your own. I, I believe in you. If you're building this, you've clicked the hardware, you've come this far, I believe you can do this. You also, oh, another spring. <laughs> You need 10 coils of a K25 spring. You can probably use others, but it's designed for this. And it's not too hard to prime. Um, next, you need a cut down piece of polycarbonate. I'll put the dimensions in the description. It's just the plunger tube. It's standard caliber in size, so you, if you have an extra caliber and plunger tube, you can use that. I believe you can also find these on Amazon. Uh, it cost me around like $20, though, just because it's a foot long length. Um, you need your piece of 17 30 seconds and 9 16 inch brass uh, that you have to drill and then interlace with each other. They are cut using uh, these two brass jigs, which I'll show you how to cut them later in, in the video. And what else do you need? Oh, you need a two inch Chicago bolt. This isn't too hard to find. I found it at my local uh, hardware store. So it shouldn't be too easy, too hard to find. Um, you need 630 seconds threaded rod uh, that you need to cut down to specific sizes. Uh, I'll have the dimensions in there. You can just use like a chop saw or something. Or no, a chop saw, maybe. Right. Just use something that can cut metal. You also need some filament for pinning stuff together. Um, and obviously you need music wire for this for the spring. Oh, 
So in the original guide, in the original build, uh, it says you need a piece of aluminum to put through here in order to, to strengthen it. But you don't actually need this. It's bogus. In my testing, you do not need this. It's perfectly strong even without it. Uh, then you need your O-rings. Uh, it uses a standard caliper sized O-ring for the uh, two of them for the plunger tube and plunger head. So you can find those fairly easily on Captain Slug's Etsy. Then uh, you need these O-rings, which I'll put the dimensions for them in the description and a link to the to the Amazon location. So, I believe I have covered everything. If I didn't, I'll, I'll put everything in the description, anything that I missed. But now, let's get into the build guide. So, to start, we're going to start with the barrels section. So, to start, you take your um, ejector, and you thread a screw through the center in order to create a hook for the extension spring. You could probably use really any extension spring. Uh, that's a decent, that looks pretty similar to this. It'll, it'll probably work. Then you need another screw to secure it to this piece on the barrel. So first what you're going to want to do is add the extension spring to this uh, by, by hooking it around the screw, or just by placing it in there and then threading the screw into it. Then you place the screw it, uh, this is going to be a larger head screw, probably. Uh, you may be able to use a 440, but I, I use this large uh, self-tapping screw. And you take that, and you place it inside of there. I'm using an um, electric screwdriver for most of this, uh, but you can also just get away with the normal one. I just use that because it's quicker. Then you screw that in there. Now, I have a feeling that you're supposed to use uh, the one and three quarters inch six thir six thirty seconds bolt in order to go through here, and the since there's a nut slot at the top, but this thing isn't long enough. I don't, I don't know exactly, but I'm just using the screw to hold it in place. It's plenty strong, and it should hold fine. Perfect. Now you have your ejector, which it won't seat properly until you put the housing on there. Which is what we're going to do next. So, here's the ejector housing. Let me fish this out of there. So, first you're going to, get, going to want to take a piece of dart foam, then place another piece of dart foam on top of that. Then you're going to want to take your small catch spring, and you're going to want to thread the sharp section through the dart foam on this side. And then you're going to want to place it so that the spring is facing closer to the open side. Then you take your ejector catch, place it in. Dang it. This is very inconvenient. Probably bumped the tripod. Then you're going to want to take your ejector catch and place it in there. Are you kidding me? Then you're going to want to take your ejector catch at that time. It You're going to want to take your ejector catch so that it's so that the, the spring so it rests on the spring when it rotates. Then the original calls for these metal finishing nails to be cut down. I can't do that. So instead, I created these 3D printed pins for it. Which work wonders actually. They they work perfectly. So basically you're gonna to want to take one of those or just the barrels pin if you can if you're okay with cutting one of those down. And then take that and push it through there. 
And you're going to want to take this section right here, place that down, take the ejector housing, push it through there so that the um, ejector is can move without falling out. Then you're going to take your barrels pin and push it through so that it pushes through the ejector. Which sometimes works, and sometimes it doesn't. This is one of those times where it doesn't. I said sometimes this thing wants to work and sometimes it just doesn't. There we go. Got it in. And then you're going to want to take your second barrel spin and place it up here. Uh, you're supposed to have three, but I lost one of them and it works just fine with just two, so I don't know. Uh, next, you're going to take. Actually, first, you're probably going to want to test it. Oh, place this on there. Then find a spring thunder shell in a second. And test the ejector to make sure it catches. This one catches. It's a release. Catches and releases. And it flung it halfway across the room. So that is the first time that it's worked on the first try. That's good that it happened during the build. Then you're going to want to take a 440 screw, or this is a kind of long shot screw, and then you're going to thread that into the front grip so that it connects to the barrel, so that it connects to the, eject the ejector housing. And just like that, uh, well, no, it's not finished. You need the top stripe. Uh, there's also a Picatinny version. I opted just for the flat top since that's what the original blaster has. And I don't think this blaster is powerful enough to, to warrant using a sight. <laughs> I'm just gonna screw that in there. There we go. And bam! Barrels are finished. Alright, next up, we're going to start the back half of the blaster, starting with the frame front. But first, I'm going to pause this video because I'm running out of storage. Alright, so for this back half section, uh, you, we're going to start with something you might not expect. We're going to take E6000 glue, which is, you can find on Amazon, it's like 10 bucks. The, the stuff is awesome. And you're going to take your ejector core and your ejector lever and screw the ejector lever into that. And then you're going to want to apply glue to the, uh, the E6000 glue to the ejector core. Uh, use this instead of standard super glue because it has a much better seal and it's just overall more airtight. Ah, shit, I got some on my hands. Okay. Nice thing about this stuff, though, is that you get if you get it on your hands, it's not a super big deal should come off fairly easily. Yeah, you can just kind of rub your hands together and it'll just come off, because it's not like standard glue. It's just, it's kind of silicon-esque-ish. Uh, make sure that this section, uh, there isn't any glue on the outside of it, because that'll prevent it from rotating smoothly. Once again, rub your hands to get all the, the glue off, and then wait a day for this to cure. Yeah, a day. Um, we're just going to put it in the blaster right now, since it's... And then I'll fire it later, I guess. Next, you're going to want to take your frame front and frame rear. Yes, I know this is already attached, but I already assembled it, so sue me. So this section, first you're going to put the ejector trip on it. Uh, this thing is basically, it's, it, Adrian explains it well in his teardown video, so watch that. It's, make sure it's facing the right direction with the slanted side down. 
and make sure the spring is cut properly so that the film so that the filament pin can go through easily. Then you're going to want to take your your caps. Make um, unless you're weird, make sure they're the same color as your barrel. Then screw them in to the back. Make sure you use countersunk screws for this, or else they won't close properly. Then take your O-rings and use some E6000 to glue it to that. Uh, this stuff, these aren't coming off. <laughs> uh, side note, while you're at this spot, to connect this to this, you need to uh, drill through this with a, with a proper size drill bit in order to fit the, the Chicago bolt. Um, I can't remember the exact sizing, but you should be able to just test fit it and to see what works. So, it is now time to get the, the ejector trigger onto this. So first you're going to want it to make sure there's no support material in here, uh, clean that out, make sure it's smooth, which I think I printed this with the wrong orientation, so it's not super smooth, but it's fine. So put that in there, make sure there, it fits well, that there's little play. Then take, then take your uh, spring that you've chosen for this, place that in the trigger, in the trigger guard front. I think it's trigger, I think it's front. That may be wrong though. And align them, which is easier than, well actually, no, you have to align them like this. Whoops, wrong. And once you do that, it should just drop right in. Uh, you may want to add some lubricant, just to make it a bit smoother. I'm going to do... Spring just dropped on the floor, didn't it? Spaghetti monster in the sky. Okay. Uh, so once again, take your spring, put it in there. Take this, push that down. It should just, it should just drop right in place. Um, it this may look like it would come loose pretty easily, but it, it really doesn't. Right now I have lubricant and glue on my hands. <laughs> um, then take this. Rub it around a bit, make sure it goes properly. Then screw it closed. I use, once again, just 10 millimeter and put 2.6. 10 millimeters, but I ran into those, so I just used, uh, I just used 440 screws. And bam. Uh, maybe don't screw it in super tight. There we go. Yeah, don't screw it in as tight as you normally would. That way it can, you can release it easily with your index finger. All right, then test it with the barrel. This seems to fit well. Uh, shouldn't accidentally release or anything, but it's nice and smooth to release. All right, that seems good. Next, we're gonna move on to the frame rear. So this is kind of the scary portion. You have to glue the blaster together if you want a good seal. So you're going to want to grab more of that E6000 and rub that right in here between the blaster. You should be able to just yank this apart if you're lucky, but I'm unlucky. So when you do this, just know that your blaster works. Just test it before you close it. I've already built this blaster before, so I'm fine, but just make sure you're good. All right. Uh, once also on the frame rear, also glue it in just so that it has a better seal. Make 
make sure it's lined up properly and you should be good. All right. Now we're going to take our threaded rod. Um, I got the right sizes. Uh, the problem is, is that the ones in the stock are like just a hair longer than the other ones. Okay, these are good. So, first you're going to want to take this one. Uh, I already put the nut in there because it, the threading's a bit messed up after I cut it. So, you should be able to do that on your own. I just didn't want to take them off and redo it because it was it would just be more trouble. So it wasn't worth it. threaded rods looks good uh, another thing you probably would want to do is put the trigger guard on right here uh, but mine snapped uh, so just know that you would just put a filament pin through there to put the trigger guard in also the trigger is already done because I can't get the pin out of this thing uh, I just used a 3d printed pin that I designed and cut it down to the right size for the triggers, usually you use a filament pin, but I use just a 440 screw because it seemed to work better and it's just as smooth. Make sure when you put the trigger in is and that this is facing this way, uh, the center lever doesn't matter which way it's facing, and that this lever, and that the end of here, that the end of this lever is facing down from the trigger. All right, it's time that you've done that. We're going to take the the plunger tube. No, we're taking the plunger tube. Also, these threaded rods are annoying, by the way. They fall out all the time when you're building. You're going to want to take the plunger tube. Um, I'm debating whether or not I should wrap glue around it to, to give it a better seal. I'm actually going to put glue around the edge of the plunger tube in order to seal it better. You don't need to do this, but it seems to work. But it, I think it'll work. Because I seem to be getting a lot of air loss right at that section. Um, also, put in, also put one of your caliber and O-rings down around that piece. That should just clean the slide on there and the threaded rods can cleanly fall out of the blaster I'm kidding that's not supposed to happen but it does um, great then you're gonna want to take your uh, your one of your back straps I think that's what it's called I forget what the part part is called you can identify which part it is and I realized I'm not on camera okay then you're going to want to push that through there on the threaded rods. Make sure that can move smoothly. Then you take your other back strap, place that one there. Look at that, it's coming together. Next, you're going to take your plunger tube or your plunger head, which you have definitely lubricated and you definitely haven't forgotten to do that. Uh, yeah, put some lubricant on it, although I'm not sure if it's necessary. It has a really loose O-ring fit, so you might want to some, put some Teflon, Teflon tape under it. Um, I haven't done that since I don't have any Teflon tape, somehow. Uh, you'd also probably want to put some padding on there, but I don't have any padding, so... Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to want to put your K25 spring with the squared end close to the bottom. Uh, you can just... You don't have to cut down the spring. You can order a pre-cut one from out of darts. Then you're going to want to take this piece, which has the uh, this section right here. I think it's the trigger rear. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, this little section. Uh, you're supposed to use a finishing nail to pin that. I used a 3D printed pin, but I super glued it, so it's, it's already in there. Because I didn't think I'd be doing a build guide for this. But lo and behold, I'm doing a build guide for this. Because nobody else has done a build guide for this. And this build guide is probably terrible. Since it's probably not even in frame half the time. Anyways, um, so align 
this with the that uh, the threaded rods with the catch housing. I'm using all the versions that connect to the stock. Uh, if you're not, just select the ones that aren't in the stock file, the stock um, folder. Push these threaded rods back in. So make sure that this section right here pushes into that. Otherwise, the trigger won't be able to interact for the section. Oh shoot, I almost forgot to do something. Wait. Uh, who? Alright, uh, don't forget, if you're doing the stock version, uh, put... to... No, it's right there. Um, I would advise pre-building the stock, but since some people might not be building the stock version, uh, we're just gonna be... we're just gonna skip that part for now. I'm gonna put a cut here. Okay, we're back. So here we have our two, uh, I know it's kind of a weird cut, here we have our two um, stock threaded rods. So you're going to insert, the for the stock, you're going to insert the long one into the bottom section. Make sure the nut is captured properly. Then you're going to insert the short one into the top section. And there you go. This will just make it easier later on for doing the stock option. Also make sure this doesn't protrude past this because then the back strap won't go properly. Then align it like I said earlier. Hope that the threaded rods don't fall out. As in, hope none of the threaded rods fall out. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if only one of them falls out. If any of them it fall out, it it isn't a mistake. Okay, and then you should be able to. There you go. Bam. Except you, you, you can't you can't finish that yet because um you have to do the catch you have to do the catch assembly. So, for the catch assembly, it's very important which direction you orientate this. So, you're going to want to place it with the curved side, with the curved side, facing. So, so, place your spring in the catch. Insert it like this, so that the, the, the curved facing side is facing the hole. This may seem counterintuitive, but it makes it, but it makes it, well, it makes it work with the trigger, because that's how it's designed. It looks kind of weird, but it works. Then you close this fully. Which takes some strength, since you have to fight the spring. If there's some pre-compression. Then, then you push the thing up. The, the thing, the catch up, so that you can slide it through the plunger rod. And you align it properly. Make sure the spring doesn't pop out. The spring popped out. Just my luck. Ow. My chair is like backed up into the it's the wall. So, shut up. Sorry I'm being completely silent, it's just trying to align this properly is not very fun. <laughs> Probably cut forward to when I got it aligned.
Okay. I think I got it. There we go. Like something broke. Nope. Okay. So take your uh, one of your six. Take some of your six thirty seconds nuts. And and use your socket wrench to thread them on. Finally, you can let go of the spring. Stop. Okay. Whew. And there we go. Okay, now you're going to put on this. Uh, there's a cap on the end of this. Um, you just screw it in using two regular screws. It's a bit finicky to get it aligned, but once you do, it's not that difficult. Um, where is the, where is my screw? There. Okay. No, my screw is not there. It is there. Okay. So you're gonna take your prime handle. facing the camera. Then you're going to want to align these two holes and start screwing in. I'm going to use a screwdriver just to make this Not a stock. Um, give me a second. And it caught. And it releases. All right. So catch works. That's good. Now we're going to 
uh, attach the barrel. So we're gonna line these two up, put the barrel on like that. We're going to grab our Chicago bolt. Uh, push this together so it's easier to push this together so it's easier to align. Place that in there. Push it through. And then thread the other side up. If I can, if I can thread it all on. Apparently, I can't. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't need to be super tight, since it's just trying, keeping it from falling out. Then, where is the front sight? Take the front sight, we screw that in. Open up the barrel. Seems to work. Close it. Seems to work. Alright. Um... Of course, you're going to have to wait for this to dry in order to test it, but everything else in this blaster seems to work. Yep. Well, actually, you might want to check uh, one other thing, which is you might want to op open up the barrel, put a shell in, it catches, does release, Ejector works, although that may not work depending on your spring bending abilities. That's Aang. All right, uh, now if you're not planning on doing the version with the stock, this is pretty much the end of the video. Uh, but if you are doing the version with the stock, keep watching, because that's what we're covering right now. So first, you need to align these threaded rods, which is easier said than done. Kind of hard to do this without bending them. But... Once you get it, it's pretty easy to just push it through. more difficult than it was last time. I feel like I'm going to snap the threaded rod in half. There we go. There we go. Okay, yeah, just kind of Stay on it until you can get it to align properly. Alright, then you're going to take this, the end cap, which you could print in like a TPU or something, I guess, if you want it to be squishy stock, but do you think I care about... Well, actually, no, the real reason is my printer can't print flexible filaments. Um, so, put your uh, put your 632. I keep saying 632 because there's a dash in the center. Nobody ever corrected me on it. Now it's in my vocab. What's that? Make sure you're not accidentally spinning the threaded rod instead of the nut. Right. Now this one. I'm fine with that dropping on the floor since I have a spare one. Wait, no, I don't. Shoot, the other ones are for the shell carrier. I have messed up. All right, stock is done. And now time for the shell carrier. 
which I don't have the elastic right now, but basically all you do for the elastic is you run one loop through, then run the other loop through, then put two pieces of filament in there. It's pretty simple. But I don't have that, so we're just going to do this. Uh, this assembly would obviously be reversed if you're doing it on the other side. Whoop. Put your two 630, 630 seconds bolts through this through the center. Of course I'm only doing one since the other one's on the floor. Tighten that. Don't tighten this one for wait, do I have my I do. That is why you buy a giant bag of them. Oh! I just... That... I just... That... That's painful. Oh yeah, that really digs into your shoulder. That's nice. Well, too late to fix it. Anyways... That's the Fominature build guide, aside from this piece, because it's still drying. Actually, it might be good enough to put in. Oh, shoot. I messed it up. Well, that's good. And make sure when you put that in that it aligns smoothly, it works smoothly. That's it. Uh, bye, I guess. I hope this was a good, was helpful to at least one person. So yeah, I finished filming this video, and then I forgot to show you how to cut the brass. I'm an idiot. Okay, so here is uh, the 1730 seconds brass. This is 916. Doesn't matter. Um, so basically what you do is you take a screw, put it through there, uh, you take a nut, close it so that it's tight on the on it. Then you take a drill press or a drill, uh, I forget what size it is, but just drill through that, drill through that, straight through, and bam, it's done. Sand the inside a ton, sand the outside a ton, then polish it or something, I don't know. Uh, also this is cut down, right, so just take a pipe cutter, wrap it around there, make sure to get out any burrs. That's how you cut it, that's it, that's the end.